let me quickly give you, he, he gave me a, a, a marvelous introduction, um, but I want to spotlight one of the things I said, uh, uh, one of the things that he said about my background. I've, I've narrated over 500 audiobooks, and I mentioned that not as a boast, but as a lead in to this statement. Uh, recording JR and the recognitions was, without a doubt, the most rewarding and simultaneously difficult uh, bit of narration I've ever had to do in my life. Um, I think about it a lot. And when the opportunity uh, came uh, around to do Carpenter's Gothic, it was a marvelous uh, opportunity to, to have a little more of that. Um, I, I learned in 2010 that, that uh, they were looking for people to narrate uh, Gaddis, and I confess I didn't know anything about him. They sent me a script uh, that I was to provide an audition that the uh, literary estate would uh, make a choice from. And I could tell it was going to be a phenomenal experience. Um, absolutely start to finish. Uh, it's designed for audio, in, in my opinion. Um, I can't really speak to the, the greater themes the way your scholars here can, but I can tell you uh, as an actor, his command of dialogue is astonishing, um, and particularly how he runs things together. And it's just meant to be heard, I think. Uh, so I can answer questions about the audiobook experience later, but I figure we should just dive right in. I have picked uh, three shorter segments. Things are There's so many different things in this book, I thought it would be better instead of doing one long one, I would give you some snippets. So what I've got here is a piece from the principal's office with a whole bunch of people in there. A marvelous chunk with Gibbs and Maria and uh, the boy David. And finally, one of my favorite scenes in the entire book, uh, J.R. and Bast walking in the rain when Bast finally has enough. So this is from early in the book, the principal's office. On the screen was Smokey Bear. Pledge as an American to save and faithfully to defend from waste the natural resources of my country, its soil and minerals, its forests, waters, and wildlife. The youngsters find it reassuring, said Hyde, looking up from Smokey Bear, like seeing a commercial. Uh, yes, in terms of implementing the study material, Whiteback continued as his guests came to rest on the small sofa under their litter of cameras, coats, pamphlets, brochures, and notepaper. Into a uh, meaningful learning experience. A series of collapsible pipes called the intestines. Uh, 37,500, came Petchy's voice from the inner office for legislative services rendered in conjunction with Proposition 13 on the referendum on pay subscription tele... You better call me back on this. Of America, the free enterprise system and man's modern industrial know-how have forged a two-edged sword, which at one fell swoop has severed the barrier between... Uh, what's that? The American flag, said Mr. Petchy, joining them, glittering at the cuff. Oh, the film. It's on film. A, a resource film on uh, natural resources. Uh, Mr. Hyde's company was kind enough to provide what America is all about, said Hyde, standing away from the set with the proprietary air. What we have to, to, to use, or rather utilize. Like the iceberg rising to a glittering peak above the surface. For like the iceberg, we see only a small fraction of modern industry, hidden from our eyes in the vast... Gibbs, is that you? Uh, come in, come in. No, uh, don't let me disturb you. Yes, come in. We have some people here from the foundation, Whiteback insisted. Their program specialist, Mr. Ford, an arm rose from the clutter of cameras. And Mr. Gall here, Mr. Gall here is a writer. Uh, Mr. Gibbs here is what you might call chief cook and bottle washer on our science program and doing a fine job, yes. Mr. Gall here is getting material together on the 
Foundation's whole in-school television support program. Gibbs, uh, they're going to publish it in book four. Bitten off quite an assignment, Mr. Gull. I imagine you need all the information you can get, said Hyde, abruptly abruptly threatening him with a thick brochure from above. I just happen to have this research report with me. It's a pretty good rundown of long-term operating cost estimates on closed-circuit cable setups compared to what you run into trying to carry a full lesson load on open-circuit broadcasting. I picked it up to show the senator here, uh, Congressman Petchy. Energy, still locked in the vast shale oil deposits beneath thousands of barren mountain peaks, jutting from the sea of the public domain, Two-thirds of the state of Utah is structuring the material in terms of the ongoing um, situation, yes, on Mozart's uh, ring, is it? I noticed somewhere here, Mr. Ford spoke for the first time with the commanding indifference of an old-school drawl, running his finger down a cataloged list. Here, the Rheingold, is it? Oh, you have one of our schedules. We uh, having trouble locating one. Uh, this use of uh, utilization of uh, Shepperman. Shepperman, yes. Well, he um, it was his idea originally. This doing the ring before he before we replaced him. He um, painted, taught painting. Uh, that was before we replaced him, of course. A little trouble over the loyalty oath provision. Little, Mr. Petchy repeated, opening pinstripe over his glittering tie clasp in a campaign gesture. Like being a little pregnant, eh? All righty. Jumping to the middle of the book, Gibbs and Marion. There's your doorbell. Everybody's idea that I kept Tom from his work by being a burden, or maybe he's kept me from mine. All these years, I might have done something myself. I might still, if Mary and Christ, I just met a talented woman who's never been allowed to do anything, and is there any more vodka? Mama, Mama, it's a man. I'll be right back. Give me your glass. His hands abruptly searched pockets as he turned back to the window, one to come up with matches, the other empty, and he returned the matches and stood there staring down at the sidewalk. Jack? David. Oh. Uh, he turned to the somersault off the sofa's arm into the laundry heap. I thought you were getting pajamas. Jack, when the Chinese people look at television, are the people they see on television Chinese? Why, of course. And the, lift me up. Hold on. Higher. Hi, what are you doing? Trying to see how you'd look on Chinese television. Would I be upside down? Why would I be upside down? Because you'd be on the other side of the world, wouldn't you? Now get into your pajamas. I'll finish that game with you. Were you playing with Mama? No. Don't drop me. Oh, she was playing by herself? No, with Papa before the policeman came. What policeman? The one that came and got him when he peeked. Jack? When, when he, what policeman? Marion, do you know what I'd like to do, Jack? Uh, what? He reached up to free his throat from an embrace suddenly so close he faltered. I'd like to go right up to the sky and disappear and then come down like the rain. Jack? What? Marion, what? That was Tom's orders arriving by special messenger. She held out a glass. Tomorrow he... But where is he? David just said a policeman came and I was going to tell you. Yes. David, I told you to go get your pajamas. Now get down, go to your room and find your pajamas. Now hurry. Then she turned. It's Shram, she said. Something about your friend, Shram. Well, what? What about him? I don't know. Tom was talking to him and he... Tom's at Bellevue now? Why didn't you... No, that was, that was it. Shram got out 
and came to Tom's office and Tom brought him down here. And then the, I don't know, the police came. They thought he'd, maybe he'd jumped. They thought somebody'd jumped and they wanted Tom to, but where is he? Where are they? Tom went with him. They took him up to 96th Street to see, why didn't you tell me? He turned for the hall. Why the hell didn't you tell me when I got here? I thought, she said, following him, I just wanted, you just wanted the goddamn spotlight a minute longer, didn't you? Looked like Shram was grabbing it with the last thing he's ever done, but, but Jack, if it, they'd reached the door and he pulled it open. Jack, if Shram's dead and I'm here, I, Christ, I, you've got to have soap opera. Jack, I'm going to leave Tom. Ginger, I'm going to leave Tony. The minute something real happens, you have to star in your own goddamn soap opera. The door slammed, and she'd scarcely turned from it when it shook with his pounding on the other side. Marion, she got it open. What? Tom was going to lend me 20, and I've got to get a cab up there. Did he, did he leave it for me? No. Well, he, could you, she turned to the kitchen, put down her glass and opened a cupboard there. I have 10. Fine. And uh, fine, thanks. He took it, holding the door. And Marion, one last thing. If you think you're going through with this, you can pull that on anybody else. Just don't ever try to tell me again that you're doing it for him. You can lie to Tom, lie to yourself, lie to David, but don't ever try to. The door came closed flat in his face, and he turned, sliding one foot toward the elevator, slipped, and made for the stairs, down them and out, hailing traffic before he reached the curb. And then my favorite, J.R. and Bast. Ow, ow, ow. The wind held his hair on end, hunched down on one knee there. Lights loomed a shadow back over him, dropped it as they passed. Ow! Well, what happened? The, this busted sidewalk sticking up, I hit my ankle. I mean, everything's getting wet. Holy, I mean, couldn't you even carry this here tape thing? It keeps bumping my... All right, but where... What do you, I mean, I couldn't even see you ahead of me just then. Did you hear what I said? I mean, just this once. No, wait. I mean, what's like, what was it all for? That's what I've been trying to tell. What? Tell me what? I mean, you're telling me how neat the sky lo looks. You're telling me, listen to this here music. And you even get pissed off when I, I asked you what you heard. That's all. I, what, like it lifted me out of myself? Not what I said, no. You, what you heard. What was I supposed to hear? You weren't, you weren't supposed to hear anything. That's what I, then how come you made me listen? To make you hear, to make you, to make you feel, to try to, okay, okay. I mean, what I heard first, there's all this high music, right? So then this here lady starts singing up yours, up yours. So then this man starts singing up mine. And then there's some words. So she starts singing up mine, up mine. So he starts singing up yours. So then they go back and forth like that. Up mine, up yours, up mine, up yours. That's what I heard. I mean, you want me to hear it again? No. See? I knew you'd never want you to hear it again. I never want to hear it again myself. You, everything. You ruin everything you touch. Wait, wait, hey, quit. Think I could ever hear it again without hearing your everybody. You destroy whatever you, quit kicking it. You, it's smashed. What did you, why not? Why not smash everything? everything, every place. There's nothing you can't destroy. Even, even music. 
a glorious piece of music. I thought it could rise above anything, even your, even you. I thought maybe you'd hear something there, some speck, just a speck in you somewhere might wake up, might be exalted for an instant. You hear me? Even an instant. Boy, after all I did for you, all you did, there's nothing you haven't done for me. Nothing. Wherever I go, I, that junk pocket radio, there was one station with decent music, the only station left on the radio anywhere. It came on one night, noises, screaming, pounding noise, brought to you in this new popular format by the JR family of companies, bringing America its full share of, of holy shit. No, but no, but nothing. That was you too, wasn't it? Even that. It was your idea, wasn't it? Okay. What's so? Okay, nothing. It's the whole thing. The whole rotten thing. It's a perfect example. Even you can understand it. The one station that played music, great music, left in the whole loud, cheap, pounding stupidity of radio, you find it and make it cheap and stupid like all the rest. If you could, if there was one flower out here in this mud and weeds and broken toilet seats, you'd find it and step on it. I wondered if you had a favorite text that you narrated from Gaddis and also just kind of even how you approached just doing just the so many in the multitude of voices within them. Uh, let's see. Am I on? Yep. <laughs> there, there we go. Uh, I mean, it. For, for me, JR is definitely my favorite. It might be because it was the first one I did. It might be because there's just so much to sink your teeth into. Uh, although I have to admit, Carpenter's Gothic I did later uh, with Tantor um, uh, audio. I, I jokingly called it uh, uh, JR Jr. Um, and I have to say that one also. It's it had a lot of the things that I liked the best about JR in terms of how to perform it, um, but in a more in a tight, more concise way. Um, so it's 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 hard to say. Um, I, I but I think if you if I had to choose, it would it would be JR. A lot of the voices happen because of what he gives you. Um, Principal, oh, I'm forgetting his name, Whitefish or White. I just read it and I don't remember now. Um, but he he puts A H M in there, an arm, um, and his he sort of like makes a stab at a sentence and then doesn't get there and changes it. So that sort of waffling hesitation just seemed to fit it. Um, Gibbs, I read with a rasp because everything about his character, he just seemed tired all the time. Uh, and so that worked for that. Um, and then, you know, JR, I've just had to do a, a lighter voice. And there's something about doing an innocent, young, clean, teen voice. But the stuff he's saying is just this crazy sort of capitalist. Uh, it, I, I think the simpler his voice is, the funnier uh, that stuff lands. I don't know if all of that answered what you were asking. No, oh, no. that's great. Yeah. Oh, I should, let me put one other thing in. Uh, I did Agape Agape as well. And I decided I wanted to, much like JR is this magnificent undertaking, I thought I would do an audiobook undertaking with Agape Agape since it was three hours and 15 minutes running time. And the entire thing reads like a breathless monologuing rant. It, it, it just, the energy in it and the frustration. So uh, if you ever listen to Agape Agape, I recorded that in one sitting with one bathroom break. Um, I, had, I made some hot tea uh, and just talked from start to finish. Uh, and you can hear my voice start to go and it fit. I'm like, I, his voice would be going, I think. Uh, and uh, that that was just sort of a, a little experience. And, you know, I wish Gaddis were around to let me know if he liked that or not. 